Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of VMware Explore 2022, formerly VMworld, I've been saying that, I got to get that out, Dave, I've been saying <laughs> VMworld, it just kind of comes off the tongue when I'm tired, but you know, wall-to-wall -wall coverage, again, back-to-back -back interviews, all day, two sets, this is a wrap up here with the analyst discussion, we got one more interview after this, really getting the analyst perspective around what we've been hearing and seeing, observing, and reporting on theCUBE, again, two sets, blue and green we call them, here on the show floor, on Moscone West, the sessions upstairs, two floors of, of amazing content sessions, uh, keynote across at Moscone North and South. Sarbicho Wells here, cloud strategist uh, with theCUBE, and of course, uh, what event would be complete without Sarbit weighing in on the analysis. And, and, and I'm, you know, all kidding aside, I mean that because we've had great interactions around you know, digging in, you, you're like a roving analyst out there and what's great about what you do is you're social, you're communicating, you're touching everybody out there, but you're also picking up the puzzle pieces. And we, you know, of course we recognize that because that's what we do. Um, but you're out, we're on the set, you're out on the floor. And you know your stuff. And, and you know Cloud, so <laughs> How you doing, this is sir? your wheelhouse. Great to, good see, to you. see you. I'm good guys, thank you. Thank you for having me. So, I mean, Dave and I were riffing going back earlier in this event and even before during our Super Cloud event we're reminded of the old OpenStack days. If yeah. you remember, Dave, OpenStack was supposed to be the open source version of cloud, and that was a great ambition, and the Cloudorati at that time was very into it because it made a lot of sense, and the vision, all the infrastructure as code, everything was lined up, everything religiously was on the table, beautiful cloud future, okay. Um, 20, 2009, 2010, where was Amazon then? They just went up like a rocket ship. So cloud ended up becoming AWS, in my opinion. Yeah. OpenStack then settled in, did some great things, but also spawned Kubernetes. Okay, so you know we've lived through this, Sarbi. We've seen this movie. We were actually in the trenches on the front lines, present at creation for cloud computing. Yeah, I was at Rackspace when OpenStack was open sourced. I was there in, in the rooms and discussions and all that. I think OpenStack was given to the open source like prematurely. I usually call it like we left a toddler on the freeway. You know, the toddler got <laughs> Behind the wheel. It was and they not can't the see over the dashboard. So we have learned over the years in the last yeah. two decades, like we have seen the open source, the rise of open source, and we have learned quite a few lessons. The one lesson we learned from there was like, don't let a project go out in the open till it's mature enough with one vendor. So we did that prematurely with NASA. NASA and Rackspace yeah. gave the the code from two companies to the open source community, and then the likes of IBM and HP, uh, no, now HPE, they kind of hijacked the whole thing and then put a lot of developers on that, and then a lot of us sort of second tier startups. And, and, but started but, but, but I remember, it. not to interject, but at yeah. that time, there wasn't a lot of pushback for letting them. It wasn't like they infiltrated, like a, the vendors always try to worry about vendors coming in open source, but at that time it was pretty, people accepted them. And then yeah. it got off the rails. Then, you know, remember the great API <laughs> you, debate? You called it a Hail Mary to, against AWS, I which did. is what it was. It was, what it was. I mean, and it's true, yeah. ended up being right. <laughs> um, but the, the battle started happening when you started seeing the network primitives being discussed. You're starting to see some of the in the trenches. Really important conversations around how to make essentially cross cloud or super cloud work. And, and again, totally premature, it goes up continue. And, and what does that mean today? So okay. Is VMware too early on their cross-cloud? Are they, is multi-cloud ready? No. For, it, and is it just vaporware? No, they're not too early actually. On, 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 on that side, they were pre premature to put that out there, but this is like a very mature company, like in the ops area. You know, we have been using um, VMware stuff since 2000, early 2000. I, I was at Commerce One when we started using it. <laughs> and yeah, it was for lab manager, you know, like, you know, you put the labs Desktop out Desktop edition. Yeah, yeah, kind of stuff. <laughs> so it, it matured pretty fast, but now it, it's like, for all these years, they focused on the ops side more, right? And then the challenge now, in the DevOps sort of driven culture, which is very hyped, to be honest with you, um, they are trying to find a place for developers to plug in on the left side of the sort of whole systems lifecycle management sort of line, if you will. So I think that's a, that's a struggle for, for VMware. They have to figure that out. And they are like a tap Tenzu application platform uh, services. They, they have released a new version of that now. So they're trying to do that, but still they are 
from the sort of GitOps to the, to the right, from that point to the right. On the left side, there are a lot more tooling developers use, as we know, but they are um, very scattered kind of spend and scattered technology on the left side. VMware doesn't know how to tackle that. But I think, I think VMware should focus on the right side from the GitOps to the right and then focus there and then help in the multi-cloud, cross-cloud. My sense right. is they're saying, hey look, we're not going to own the developers. I think they yeah. know that. Yeah, and yeah, I think yeah. they're saying, Do, develop in whatever world you want to develop in, we'll embrace it. And then the ops guys, we, we got you covered. We got the standards, we have the consistency, and you're our peeps, you then take it you know, to, to the market. Is that not, I mean, it seems like a viable strategy. I mean, look, if you're VMware, Dave, and start, be, you know this, where they are right now, the way they missed the cloud and they had to reboot that with Jassy and, and, and Ragu to do the AWS deal, it's essentially VMware hosted on AWS. Um, and clients love it because it's clarity. Okay, it's not the cloud air. So, so if you're them right now, you say to yourself, wow, we could be the connective tissue between all clouds. We said this from day one when Kubernetes was hitting the scene. Whoever can make this the interoperability concept of interclouding and connect clouds so that there could be spanning of applications and data. We didn't say data, but we said, you know, creating that nice environment of multiple clouds. Okay, and again, in concept, that sounds simple. But if you're VMware, you could own that abstraction layer. So do you own it, or do you seed the base and let it become a de facto organization, like a super layer, super pass layer, and then participate in it? Or are you the middleware yourself? We heard AJ Patel say that. So, so they could be the middleware for but, it all. They, aren't they the infrastructure super cloud? I mean, that's what they're trying to be. Right? Yeah, they're, they're, I think they're try, trying to do that. It's, it's I, I, I have said that many times, VMware is bridge to the cloud. Right. Sorry, say it again. Bridge to the Bridge cloud, to the cloud. Yeah. right? Yeah. For, for enterprises, they have virtualized their environments mostly on VMware stacks. And another thing is, I want to mention, touch on that, is the number of certified professionals on VMware stack, are, it's a huge number. It's in, in, in like tens of thousands, right? So people who have got these certifications, they want to continue that sort of journey. They want to leverage that. It's like, it's a sunk cost if they don't use that going forward. And that was my question to, to during the press release yesterday, like, are there new certifications coming into the, into the limelight? I, I think the VMware, if they're listening to me here somewhere, they will listen, <laughs> they will listen I guess. Uh, they should introduce a, a cross-cloud certification um, for their stack um, because they want to be cross-cloud or multi-cloud sort of vendor with one sort of single pane, um, so does actually Cisco and so do many others, but I think VMware is in a good spot. It's their market to lose, I, I, I call it, when it comes to the multi-cloud for enterprise, especially for the legacy applications. Well, they're not, they have the enterprise. They're super cloud enabler, Dave, for the, for the enterprise, because they're right. not hyperscaler, okay? They have all the enterprise customers who come here. We see them, we speak to them, we know them. Uh, we'll mingle but they with have them. really good relationships with all the hyperscalers. Yeah, and so those, those guys need a way to the cloud in a way that's cloud operational. So, so if you say enterprises need their own super cloud, I would say VMware might want to raise their hands saying, we're the vendor to provide that. Yes, and, totally. And then that's the middleware role. I, so middleware isn't your classic stack middleware, it's middle tissue. So you got, it's not a stack model anymore, it's completely Different maybe look. maybe my uh, my, my industry stack. maybe my industry super cloud is too aspirational. But so let's, let's assume for a second you're not going to have everybody doing their own clouds like Goldman Sachs and, and Capital One. Even though we're seeing some evidence of that, even in that case, connecting my on-prem to the cloud and modernizing my application stack and and having some kind of consistency between your on-prem and it's just call it hybrid, like real hybrid, true hybrid. They should dominate that. I mean, who is, who, if it's not, it's VMware and it's what, Red Hat? Who else? I think Red Hat wants it too. Yeah, well, yeah. I, the Red Hat, and Red Hat's doing it with IBM Consulting, and they got to be, they have great advantage there for all the banks, awesome. But what, what about the other 500,000 customers that are out if there? If VMware could do what they did with the hypervisor with virtualization and create the new thing for super cloud, AKA connecting clouds together, that's a, that's a holy grail move right there. But what about this pass layer, this Tanzu and Aria? 
which some people, on Twitter there was a little snark coming, ah, it's be realized just renamed, which it's not. I mean, it's, it's from talking to Raghu, unless he's just to totally PSing us, which I don't think he is, that's not who he is, it's this new federated architecture, and it's this, their super PaaS layer, and, and, and it's purpose built for what they're trying to do across clouds. This is your wheelhouse. What, what do you make of that? I think Tanzu is a great effort. They have put in a lot of other older products under that one umbrella. Yeah, Tanzu okay. is not a product, actually it confuses the heck out of the market that it's not a product, it's a set of other products put under one umbrella. Now they have created an, another umbrella term with a newer sort of... Uh, so it really is some uh, yeah, two some linear on there. So it's yeah. what? It's Pivotal, it's V-Realize, it's... Yeah, V-Realize, Pivotal, and, and, and older stack actually, they have some open source components in there. So, so they claim, that this, uh, Raghu's claim is this new architecture, this new federated architecture, graph database, low latency, real-time ingestion, well, AJ with AJ, that's AJ's department. We'll I mean, that, it sounded good. I mean, is, is that... Is that is actually, actually that? I think the newer, newer stuff, what they announced, that's very promising because it seems like they're building something from scratch. So, um, and it won't, graph be, database. it won't be hardened for, but, but it won't be hardened it, for. But, but, those, but they have a track record of delivering. Years. I mean, they got to say that about. Yeah, they're an engineering the focused company. Yeah, they yeah, have yeah. engineering culture. Uh, they are, their software engineers are top notch. Top I mean, notch. Yes. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. It's all relative. If, they, if the VMware stays the way they are, um, well, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that you, in a second. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> what are you okay. talking about? If they don't get gutted. <laughs> <laughs> the elephant in the room. If they don't get gutted, um, and then that we'll see what happens there. But right now, I love, we, we love VMware. We've been covering them for 12 years, and we've seen the trials not without their own issues to work on. I mean, everyone needs to work on stuff, but you know, world class. They're very proud of their innovation. But I want to ask you, what was your observations walking around the floor, talking to people? What was the sense of the messaging? Is it real in their minds? Are they leaning in? Are they like enthused? Are they nervous, apprehensive? How would you categorize the attitude of the folks here that you've talked to or observed? Yeah, it, at the individual product level, uh, the, the people are very confident what they're building, what they're delivering. But when it comes to the telling a cohesive story, if you go to all the VMware booths there, like it's hard to find anybody who can tell what what are the, all the services under Tanzu and how they are interconnected and what facilities they provide. Or oh, they can't, they, I mean, most of the people who are there, they cannot walk into the economics side of things, like how it will help you save money or, or how the TCO or ROI will improve. They are very focused on, because of the nature of the company, right? They're very focused on the technology only. So I think that that's the that's what I uh, learned. And um, another sort of um, gripe or negative I have about VMware is that they have their product portfolio is so vast, and they are even sp spreading more thinly, and they're forced to go to the left towards developers because of the sheer force of hyperscalers on one side, on the, on the right side, they are forced to work with hyperscalers to do more like ops related improvements. They didn't mention um, AI, ops, or, or data yeah, sort their of data stores management. Weak. That, that, that was weak during the, the keynote as well. And they didn't mention security, and their security story is strong. Security, I think they mentioned <laughs> it briefly. Very actually, briefly. But very briefly, but I think their security story is good actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, but really they is. didn't mention it properly, I guess. It, it wasn't prominent in the keynote. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, again, I understand why data wasn't prominent. They wanted to say about data. They need to make room for the developer story. I think this was very much a theatrical maneuver for Hawk Tan and the employee morale and the ecosystem morale, Dave. Then it had to do with the nuts and bolts of security. They can come back to get that security. In my opinion, you know, I, I don't think that was as bad of a call as burying the vSphere. Um, giving more demos, which they did do later. But the keynote, I thought, was, was well done. It was targeted for all the negative sentiment around Broadcom, and Broadcom had this, the acquisition uh, agreement that they're, this, they uh, are doing. I agree, it was well done. I it mean, just, you know, if I was VMware, I would have done the same thing. Look, at this is a bright future. We're giving it, we're, look at what we got. If you got this, it's on you. Okay, <laughs> but, 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 and I agree with you, but the, the, again, I don't, I don't see how you can't make security front and center when it is the number one issue for CIOs, CISOs, CSOs, boards of directors. They just, it was a miss. They missed it, yeah. okay. And they said, ah, oh, well, there's only so much time, but 
and they had to put the application development focus on there, I get that, but. Another thing is I think, the, the, yes, Keynote is just one sort of thing, one moment in this whole sort of continuous period, right? They, I think they need to have that narrative, like messaging done periodically, just like Amazon does, you know, like frequent events, um, tapping into the practitioners on regional basis, they have to do that. Maybe it's a funding issue, maybe it is uh, some weakness on the no, I think they're GTM planning, I talked to, we, we talked to the CMO and she yeah. said, Explore is going to be a road show, they're going to go international with, it's going to take a global, um, they're going to have a lot of wood behind the arrow, they're going to spend a lot of money on Explore, um, yeah. is what, they're, what we're seeing, and that's a good thing, you got a new brand, you got to build it. You know what I would have done? I would have had, I would have had a shorter keynote on day one, and, do and then I would have done like a security day, day two. I would have dedicated the whole morning day two keynote to security, because their stories I think is that strong. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I don't know, the developer side of things, I think it's hard for VMware to go too much to the left. The spend on the left is very scattered. You know, if you notice the tools, developers change their tools on freaking monthly basis, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's hard to sustain that there uh, on the very left side. And the, the, the it, it's hard for companies like VMware to your point. And then yeah. this came up in SuperCloud when Instant Ray med mentioned that developers drive everything, the patterns, what they like, and you know the old cliche, meet them where they are. Uh, <laughs> you know, honestly, this is kind of what AJ says is the right, they're doing, and it's the right strategy. Meeting the developers where they are means Give them something that they like. They like self-service, they like to try stuff, they like to, they don't like it, they'll throw it away. Look at the success of companies like Datadog. Companies like that have that kind of offering with freemium and self-service yeah. to, to continue to accelerate so, wins versus jamming the tooling down their throat and selling totally. them. Self-serve infrastructure for, in a way, you know, you said they, they missed cloud, which they did, be cloud air, and then they sort of got it right. They kind of did the same thing with Pivotal, right? It, it was almost like they forced, <laughs> <laughs> to, to take Pivotal, you know, buy Pivotal right, for $2 billion or whatever it was. All right, do something with it. Okay, we're going to try to do something with it. And they try to go out and compete. And now they're saying, hey, let's just open it up, whatever they want to use, let them use it. So unlike, and I said this yesterday, unlike Snowflake has to attract developers to build on their unique platform, okay? I think VMware's taking a different approach, saying use whatever you want to use, we're going to help the ops guys. And that, yeah. to me, the that's new ops, very sensitive. The new ops The guys. new ops guys, yes. Yeah, yes, but I think another challenge on the right, right is on, on the ops side is like, if, if you are cloud native, you are a new company, you just, when you're a startup, you are cloud native, right? Then it's hard for VMware to convince them to, hey, you know, come to us and use right. this. It's very hard. It is, they're a good play for a while at least. They, they can prolong their life by innovating along the way because of the, the skills gravity, I call it, yeah. of the developers and operators. Actually, that's there. They, are, they have a loyal uh, community. They have VMUG and all that stuff. And by the way, the name change for the show, I think they're trying to get out of that sort of culty kind of uh, nature of the, um, their communities that they force, the communities actually can force the companies not to do certain things certain way. Mm. And I've seen that happening. And well, they have, they well I, think, I think they're going to learn, and they already walked back their messaging, not that they said anything overtly, but you know, the Lori, the CMO, clarified this significantly, which was they never said that they wanted to replace VMworld, although the name change implies that. And what they re-amplified after the fact is that this is going to be a continuation of the community. And so, you know, it's nuanced, they're splitting hairs, but that's to me walking back the you know, the, the loyalty, and, the, and, the, and look at it, let's face it, anytime you have a loyal community, you do anything of change, people are going to be bitching and moaning. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it I mean, worked. Explore yeah, worked. It wasn't bad yeah. at all, it was no, not a bad, good. look at it, it wasn't disastrous call, okay? Not I'm at all. critical of the name change at first, but the graphics are amazing, they yeah. did an exceptional job on the branding, they did. they did an exceptional job on how they handled the new logo, the new name, the positioning. And a lot of people showed up. Yeah, and, <laughs> it worked. Yeah, I'm busy, I'm it, busier than I thought. It worked, and I think they, they threaded the needle yeah. Given everything they had going on, I thought uh, the event team it did an exceptional job here. I mean, yeah. just yeah. really impressive. Um, so hats up to the event team at, at VMware on pulling it off. Now, did they uh, make profit? I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, again, so much going on with Broadcom. 
Um, but here, being in Moscone West, we see people coming down the stairs here, Dave Sessions, you know, a lot of people, a lot of buzz on the content, sold out sessions. So again, that's the ecosystem, the people giving the talks. Yeah. You know, the people in the V brown bag, you know, got the, the V tug, they had their meeting, um, you know, this week here. Actually, the, the, the Red Hat, the, the integration with the Red Hat is another highlight. Of, of, they announced that, uh, that you can run that stack. OpenShift, open yeah. Shift. And Red Hat's not Red, here. Red Hat not here, but, yeah, yeah. but, but it was hey. Good. But it pulls more developers, more, you know, practice. About time, I would say. Why, why did it take so long? That should have happened. All right, final question, ago. Sobhi. What's the bottom line? Give us the summary. What's your take? What's your analysis of VMware Explore, the event, what they did, what it means, what it's going to mean when the event's over, what's going to happen? I think VMware with the, uh, VMware uh, Explorer have bought the time with the messaging. You know, they have promised certain things with newer announcements and now it, it, it is up to them to deliver that in a very sort of fast manner and build more hooks into other sort of platforms, right? So that is very important. You cannot just be closed system, people don't like those systems. You have to be part of the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And especially when you are sitting on top of three, actually four um, uh, or four or more public clouds, um, Alibaba Cloud was, uh, they were saying that they are the only, VMware is the only VMware based offering in mainland China on top of the Alibaba, right. and they, they can go to the other ones as well. So I think, especially when they are sitting on top of other cloud providers, they have to build hooks into other platforms, and if they can build a marketplace of their own, that will be even better, I, I think. they. And they've got the ecosystem for it. I they mean, you saw it last night. I mean, all the all the parties were hopping. I mean, there was a, yeah. there's a lot of buzz. I mean, I pressed I pressed them, Dave Hart. I had my little my zingers. I wanted to push the buttons on one question that was targeted towards the answer of, are they going to try to do much more highly competitive maneuvering? You know, get that position in the middle where are they going to be more aggressive, with frontal uh, competitiveness, or are they going to take the, the strategy of open, collaborative, and every single data point points to collaborative. Totally. Yeah. Kit Colbert, I want to do out in the open. We're not, just not, we're not one company. So I think that's the right play. If they came out and said, we're going to be this, you know. Yeah, and the one, the last thing actually, the, the one last sort of idea I'm putting out there since I uh, went to the Dell world was that there's a economics of creation of software, there's a economics of operations of software. And they are very good on the operation, economics of operation side of things. That when I say economics, it doesn't mean money only. It also means the productivity, practitioner, growth, everything is in there. Mm -hmm. So I think these vendors who are not hyperscalers, they have to distinguish these two things and realize that they're very good on the right side, economics of operations, and, and that will go a long way. Actually, I think they muddy the waters by when DevOps, DevOps, and then it's yeah. just. Well, I think, Dave, we always, we've had moments in time over the past 12 years covering VMware's annual conference, formerly VMworld, now Explore, where we, there were moments of, that's Pat Gelsinger's final speech. <laughs> yeah. I remember he was under a siege of being fired. Yeah. Uh, there was a point in time where it was touch and go, and then everything kind of came together. That was a moment. I think we're at a moment in time here with VMware, Dave, where uh, we're going to see what Broadcom does, because I think what Hop10 and Broadcom saw this week was an EBITDA number on the table that they know they can probably get or squeeze, and then they saw a future value, a net present value of future state that you could, you got to roll back and do the analysis saying, okay, how much is it worth, all this new stuff worth, is that going to contribute to the EBITDA number that they want on the number? So this is going to be a very interesting test because VMware did an exceptional job of laying out that they got some jewels in, in the oven. You think about how you know? resilient this company has been. I mean, I, you know, EMC <laughs> picked them up for a song, it was 640 million or whatever it was, you know, about the public. And then you, another epic moment, you'll recall this, was when Joe Tucci was like the mafia Don up on stage and Michael Dell was there, John Chambers, with all the ecosystem CEOs 
and it was Tucci, and then of course, <laughs> Michael <laughs> Dell ends up owning the whole thing, right? I mean, yeah. when John Chambers should have owned the whole thing. I, I mean, know. it's just, it's been incredible, and then Dell uses uh, VMware as a piggy bank to restructure its balance sheet, to pay off the EMC debt, and then sells the thing for $60 billion, and now it's like, okay, we're finally free of all this stuff, okay, now Broadcom's going to buy you. And, and if Michael Dell keeps all his stock, he'll be the largest shareholder of Broadcom and own it all. Well, and that's probably, you know, that's a good question, is, is it's going to, it's probably a, a, a very tax efficient transaction if he takes all stock, and then he can, you know, own right. against it. I mean, that's, that's, that's what a history. We're going to leave it there. <laughs> Sorry, it'd be great to have you, Dave, Thanks. great analysis. Okay, we'll be back with more coverage here, day two, winding down after this short break.